Hey guys, welcome back to the Rebel Engineer YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about my experience being rejected from hundreds of jobs as an ex-Google, ex-Big Tech senior software engineer and what I have learned during this journey. I will also be sharing some tips that hopefully you can use to navigate your job search as well as acing your interviews during this difficult time. So a couple of months back, I was extremely burned out from my current job and I started looking for a new role. And as you all know, we are in the middle of the recession right now in the United States where the job market is extremely difficult. Job openings in general is at an all-time low, especially in tech. And companies in technology as well as media are laying off people en masse. I got hundreds of rejections in the past couple of months until I finally was able to land 3-4 offers from different companies. And the types of rejection range from HR ghosted me to resume being denied in the submissions round. And I also failed during the very last minute of many different interview rounds. I also failed during screening rounds, putting assignment, for example. Here's what I've learned in the past couple of months as well as during my journey as an ex-Google and big tech senior software engineer. And hopefully this will be beneficial to you in your job searching and interview journey. The first thing I've learned during this time is job rejections have nothing to do with my self-worth or my worth as a professional. Getting a job, regardless of whether the economy is good or bad, is just a number game. And if you have been laid off, you have to remember that you are here not because you are incompetent or you have low performance or anything like that, but because the economy is being really hard right now and job layoffs are rampant across many different industries and companies, especially public companies, are trying to lay off people to maximize shareholders' value. So it's just a normal course in the market-based capitalist economy. And also people on social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, create this survival bias where, you know, they show our very good news. They just got a new job, they got a new dog, they got a new car, got a new house, etc. But they rarely show that they just got laid off. They rarely show that how hard it was for them to find a job in this market. So don't let the survival bias make you depressed or uh, discourage you from finding your next opportunity. The second tip I would like to give that may go against a lot of people online is don't track your applications too meticulously. I made this mistake a couple months back as well as during my career that I usually track job applications very meticulously. I usually have this huge Google spreadsheet where I put in the names of the companies, when I apply, uh, did they reply back to me, which resume I used to apply to them, etc, etc. But the truth of the matter is most of these applications that I apply, I got rejected. Like 90% of them got rejected. So tracking all these applications is truly a waste of time because the vast majority of them leads to nowhere especially in this market. So I basically wasted a lot of my effort. I applied to hundreds of different jobs, probably 100, 200 jobs a couple months back and I got back like 5, 10 replies from different HR departments. So it was a huge waste of time maintaining all these spreadsheets. In my opinion, LinkedIn or Indeed tracking is good enough. When you apply to a job online, you can just click the button you already applied to this job or you can also save the job or heart or like the job as a way to track it online. There's no need to have another source of truth like a separate spreadsheet to track the progress. If you would like, you can have a separate spreadsheet for all the jobs that you got into their candidate pipelines. But usually I just track all these jobs through email and Google Calendar nowadays. So it's easier for me and save overhead time. It also looks less intimidating to use Gmail and Google Calendar than keeping a separate Google Sheet of hundreds of leads from different HR. The next thing that I learned during this entire process is to stay disciplined and apply to a fixed number of jobs or spend a fixed number of hours to apply to jobs every single day. I believe that regardless of your profession, discipline is a key to success and staying disciplined every day, applying to jobs every day ensure success in your application as well as your interview process. I really like this quote from Jocko Willink, uh, discipline equals freedom. Well, if you keep applying to jobs every day, regardless of how much rejections you have, chances are you will finally be able to find the next roles that you really like and really fit your background as well as professional experience. Don't give up during this journey and please pay attention to optimize headhunting firms as well as headhunters. I know many people here probably have really bad experience with headhunters. Uh, some of them are really slow to reply. Some of them ghost you very frequently. But in these trying times, you should maximize your chance by using headhunters or headhunting firms. In the past couple of months, I have had some headhunters and headhunting firms reaching out to me with very good opportunities from some of the unknown small companies in my area that pay 
almost just as much as fang companies you'll be really surprised how many no-name companies that these headhunters bring to you uh, maybe in your local area or remotely that can pay just as much some of them are even paying more than your typical fang and big tech companies the next very important thing that I have learned in this process is do not take home assignment that takes more than eight hours. So I know that, you know, we are in a very difficult situation right now with the economy as well as the tech industry. And many people are very desperate for jobs. Many companies, both startup companies and bigger, more established companies, they are taking advantage of this opportunity and they try to give candidates their own homework, essentially. So that take more than eight hours. Uh, many of them take homework that take more than 72 hours. Now, it really depends on your industry, right? So if you are in the software industry, I would say a good rule of thumb is homework assignments should not take more than eight hours. If you are in the media industry, maybe it will take two, three, four days. Uh, I know it's very typical for the media industry to take longer than that, but it should not take you more than a week or so of work. Here, I will say that specifically for software engineers where the interview process is usually based mostly on algorithmic interviews and system design, all these, that if you spend so much time on an assignment for certain companies, regardless of whether you like the companies or not, you are actually sacrificing the interview qualities with other companies. So you should not be spending more than eight hours on a take home coding assignment, no matter how much you like the company. I still remember entering a coding interview a couple months back and the interviewer gave me a homework assignment that basically took 72 hours to complete. And at around 24, 48 hours or so, I was thinking, hey, maybe I was trying to sacrifice so much of my interview qualities with other companies that, you know, I invested so much time in this assignment. So I would say that a good rule of thumb for this is for the tech industry only that you should not have homework assignments that take more than eight hours. Basically, these homeworks should be a smaller part of the entire system. And when you see companies that give you almost like building a complete system, almost like building a complete software from scratch, they are basically giving you a full-time job, a full-time homework uh, without paying you anything. And most of these companies, at the end of the day, they just use the homework and plug it into their system without using it to actually test your skills as a candidate, as they say. So basically, you are working for free for these companies without actually getting your skills tested. Even if you are very desperate and don't have interviews lined up, you are much better off using that 72 hours or 100 something hours to actually learn lead code, study system design and apply to new jobs instead of burning your time investing to this single company and sacrifice the interviews of all other companies. It's all about opportunity cost. The next tip I would like to give to tech workers in this difficult market is to be open-minded, to lower your ego and apply to companies that may be viewed as no-name companies or smaller than your current company. What I have noticed in the past couple of months is that companies, especially smaller startup companies, some mid-sized companies, they are ramping up hiring like never before because during the pandemic, salary of big tech companies surged and went way up. So these smaller companies could not recruit enough people during those times thus nowadays the smaller companies the startup companies are the ones who are actually in a labor shortage and they are trying to ramp up their people asap to catch up in the ai era you should also be looking outside of the tech industries if possible um, for example healthcare government uh, defense aerospace these are some of the industries are actively hiring right now because traditionally these industries could not keep up with salary of the tech industries and so they are also under a huge labor and talent shortage right now uh, with all the layoffs going on in tech these uh, non-tech industries are trying to ramp up to hire more people when the tech talents are being laid off from big companies one thing i would like to stress uh, during this entire process is you should lower your ego so if you are coming from a big tech companies or big public companies, you should be more open-minded to join smaller companies. And you have to understand that your identity is not attached to your company. The fact that people from bigger companies don't want to join smaller companies is rampant in the tech war, where engineers believe that they are entitled to being paid thousands and thousands more than other uh, non-tech industry companies. If you have been watching the stock market, Nvidia is one of the companies that a company that is non-fang. Nowadays, they call Nvidia as a part of the Magnificent Seven. 
But Nvidia has always been very prestigious in terms of pay and also perk, and also not prestigious in the eyes of many software engineers and tech workers alike. But recently, their stocks have gone way up thanks to the AI revolution. So I would say that you should be more open-minded to different companies, uh, especially startups, companies that you believe are somehow less prestigious and fan. The fact of the matter is big tech are becoming a rat race to the bottom. And big tech companies are trying to squeeze out as much productivity and as many hours as possible from their employees. And after they exhaust everything that you have, they start doing mass layoff, uh, clean out what they call the bottom 10% or the worst performing employees through either mass layoffs or through PIP performance improvement plan. You'll be surprised at how many of these smaller no-name companies have almost the same pay or even better pay than many of the bigger tech companies. The next thing that I've learned is interview skill is part of the professional journey. And it should be honed day to day, just like any other skills, technical skills or sales skills or marketing skills, etc. Uh, like any other skills that you use in your day to day job. Applying to jobs, always be prepared to deal with rejections in a professional manner should be part of your professional journey. Interview skills should be honed often, no matter how secure you think you are in your current job. By the way, you should have been moving up or moving out every two or three years to make sure that your salary is actually catching up with inflation. The next thing that I've learned is all these failures and rejections have made me a better person and a better professional. Sometimes companies reject a candidate and it is actually good for the candidate. I can give you an example from my own journey. So I was rejected by Carvana and Intel in 2019. When I was, you know, trying to find the next job, the next thing that I would like to do. And after the rejection, you know, I was devastated. I really wanted to get into Kavana and Intel at the time. I think they are the next big things. And so later on, I got into Google. And as you can see in the past year or so, the stock price of Intel and Kavana have come crashing down. So at the time, I was really sad. But nowadays, I feel less and less sad about it. So sometimes companies reject you because of many reasons, not only because of you as a candidate, but also because of maybe the economy, maybe because of the market, etc. So when companies reject applicants because of the difficult market or maybe because of their own difficult situation, it's actually good for the candidate. The next tip would be prioritize applying to hybrid or on-site roles. So this may annoy some of you that are watching because you want to work remotely, uh, work from anywhere. But the fact of the matter is working from anywhere is no longer a thing nowadays. Most companies nowadays are forcing people back to the office, especially bigger tech companies, but also some of the smaller companies. And also, even if you go online to LinkedIn or Indeed, roles that say working remotely actually are not working from anywhere. As you know, each state in the United States, as well as you know countries in the world, they have different tax rules and tax laws. So actually, you cannot work from anywhere. Usually, you know, the, most of these remote roles would say remote United States or remote uh, in certain state. So that means that you have to work in those states because in many states and countries, they only allow remote work if the companies actually have offices in those states or those countries. Some people like myself, I've been working remotely, hybrid and on-site. And I would say that I actually prefer the hybrid model because I can go to the office and talk to some people uh, at certain times in, in during the week. Usually most companies nowadays, especially tech companies, when they tell you to go to the office as a hybrid workers, they don't actually tell you you have to be in the office at 7 a.m. or you get fired. You know, that's not the case for most tech companies. And you can actually go to the office and, you know, get out of the office at flexible hours during the day. Also, from my own record and numbers, I have had better chance to land job in hybrid and on-site roles compared to remote roles. When you apply to remote roles, you are basically competing with the entire country, maybe the entire continent, maybe the entire world. But when you apply to on-site or hybrid roles, you are mostly compete with people locally or you are competing with people who actually have the intentions and the means to move to my local area. So it is way less competition. Also, many of the remote roles I got actually have lower compensation number than the, the hybrid or the on-site roles. Most of the hybrid or on-site roles, they know that they are asking people to come back to the office. So usually those roles will give you a little pay bumps to, to compensate for the less flexibility. So that's a very important tip. You should prioritize applying to hybrid or on-site roles instead of remote roles. Our economy is going through a very difficult period right now. So this may not be what you you want 
But you know, we may have to do things that we don't like at the moment. So hopefully better days will come later on in our lives and in our children's life. My next tip would be to maximize the use of ChatGPT as much as you can during the application process. All the way from applying to jobs, all the way from editing the resumes, all the way from, you know, answering the questions in the application. Like I use ChatGPT to answer lots of questions in my job applications. For example, usually they ask like, why do you want to work here? Or like all these questions. So you can actually copy and paste the job posting along with your resume. And in, at the bottom, you can say, okay, answer this question in my job application. I'm not trying to say that you should be faking stuff here. I'm, if you're really interested in working in the company, you should probably uh, create your own response and then, you know, use ChatGPT to modify it a little bit to make it more fluent. And also as a senior software engineer, I also use ChatGPT to translate between languages. So let's say I would like to know how to use the queues in Python, C++, TypeScript, JavaScript, uh, Golang, etc. So usually I use ChatGPT to translate between different programming languages because I'm a senior full stack software engineer. So it's very important that I know how to code in Golang, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, Python, even C++. Most recently I applied to a company and in each of the interview rounds, they ask different programming language. So one interview round is like, oh, they want me to code in low level C++ uh, to see how I do memory management. But the next round, they actually asked me coding in Python. And then the next round after that would be like a Golang co-routines programming exercise. So I would say that you should use ChatGPT uh, to translate between languages, to answer questions in the job application, and to brush up your resume and your LinkedIn profile. If you are interviewing for more senior roles, uh, behavioral interviews and system design interviews are very important. So you should be using ChatGPT, of course, along with the uh, Alexu system design interview books, volume one and two, and designing data intensive application book to brush up your system design skills for these interviews. I will cover all these in the next couple of videos. Now, the final thing that I've learned during this entire process, and also it is my last tip to you, is to ramp up your side hustle, your side business, your freelancing business, your contract works on the side as you do the interviews. I know that many people would give advice that you should focus 100% on the interview process and doing, you know, from 4 a.m. to all the way to 9 p.m. or 12 a.m to prepare for all these interviews. But I would actually go against the grain here and I would suggest that you should ramp up your side hustle, your side business, uh, all this side contract work that you would like to do while you are searching for a job. At least you should spend maybe an hour, maybe an hour a day for your side work, side gigs, because I've seen many senior software engineers and many you know senior tech workers alike laid off earlier in last year, 2023, and up until today, 2024, 12 months later, they are still out of a job. Many of them have to work at fast food restaurants like Subway, Starbucks just to get by. So I would strongly suggest that you should not be investing 100% of your effort into all these interviews because you may be out of a job for a very long time, right? When you invest 100% into interview prep, you are essentially betting that the job economy and the rat race and the 9 to 5 uh, jobs market will get better. But this may not always be the case. You never know how long you would be unemployed during this difficult market. If you have an idea in mind, if you have a side hustle, a side business you would like to do in mind, then this is the perfect time to do so. You need to stop making excuses like, oh, I'm too busy for this, or oh, you know, I need to take care of the minimum basic stuff first, or oh, I have to take care of, you know, my nine to five job first. It is more important. I need to put food on the tables or something like that. You should start it right away. I can give an example from my own experience. So I have always wanted to have a YouTube channel, English YouTube channel like this. I have always been shying from the camera. I have always thought that, you know, I'm a foreigner. I have a you know, strong accent. I should not be starting a YouTube channel, but I love actually talking in front of the camera. I love talking in English. So, you know, I started this YouTube channel during the time last year when I was actually looking out for a new job. Even if you are currently out of job and you are currently very depressed, you should not be eating fast food, sitting on the couch, watching TVs. You should do exercise. You should go to the gym. You should live a life as if you are successful. And it will show during your interview process. Your depression and unhappiness will show during the interviews. And it won't give out a really good vibe. And also you need to hedge against the worst case scenario. So what if you are unemployed for months on end, right? What if you are employed for one or two years, right? You need a backup plan beside the nine to five job. And also if you watch one of my previous video, I've said that mass layoffs and performance improvement plan based, like PIP based firing of employees will be an annual event from now on. Neutron Jack, uh, who is uh, Jack Welch, the ex-CEO of uh, GE, basically he invented the stock ranking system. The stock ranking system is being used nowadays 
in many different industries, but especially in the tech industry. Companies from now on will fire employees every year to boost their stock price and maximize shareholders' values. This is a quote I heard from somebody else. So a job, a J-O-B, stands for just over broke. It is something that you go to to become just over broke. It won't give you the life or the experiences of all these people that you see online. If you want to have a better life, you're better off starting your own side hustle, starting your own business, rather than working on a 9 to 5 job and be a slave all day. That may mean that you need to take a path other than applying to a new job. You know, maybe you would totally abandon 9 to 5 jobs altogether. That's your choice. But I would say that you should diversify and have some backup plan for your own career. All these 10 tips are what I learned from my own experience, from my own professional journey, and definitely from all the time I have spent interviewing in the past couple months, in the past couple years. I hope that all these tips and experience will be beneficial to you just as they were beneficial to me in the past couple months. If you have been laid off, I wish you the best of luck in your job searching and job interviewing journey. And definitely, uh, please follow my YouTube channel. I would do more in videos regarding to finding jobs and interviewing, etc. Especially if you are working in the tech industry. So that will do it for me. Please let me know down in the comments below what are your thoughts and experience applying to jobs and interviewing for jobs in this difficult market. Thank you for listening. See you in next videos. Bye-bye.